You have the floor. And thank you very much for uh, the committee having me here today to be a part of this conversation. Uh, Mr. Chair, as you can well imagine, we were very concerned when we found out late last week that 13 different federal departments and agencies had this spyware attached to them. And they include, but are not limited to, Mr. Chair, Fisheries and Oceans Canada, Environment Canada, Canada Revenue Agency, Global Affairs Canada, as a former employee of Global Affairs Canada, I'm especially uh, troubled by, by this agency. The Canada Border S Services Agency, the Department of National Defense, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and several other institutions are using this spyware technology, as I said, we became aware of late last week. So this is being uh, used across government, Mr. Chair. This isn't limited to a single department, to a single agency. This is being used across government. What's even more concerning, Mr. Chair, is what this spyware is capturing, and it really runs the gamut of all communications across government, Mr. Chair. It includes text messages. All of those text messages employees have sent to their friends, to their family, and of course, we, we all know we use our phones on a daily basis. The sensitive information included in these text messages, um, information about where your children go to school, if you have to pick them up, your place of work, perhaps. Uh, any medical appointments might, you might have. The most sensitive information, uh, Mr. Chair, is communicated through these text messages. Contacts, entire contact list. Can you imagine your entire contact list? being made public, being in the hands of the government, uh, being exposed to, to exposure of, uh, of being released, being shared with those you had not intended to share your contacts with. Photos, photos, uh, Mr. Chair. You know, I, I enjoy taking photos, especially at this time of year when there are so many beautiful decorations uh, across the Capitol and elsewhere. But having your entire photo library, Mr. Kirk, being shared across government, that is, is absolutely concerning. And travel history as well. That the government, through this, through this spyware, uh, Mr. Chair, has a history of your, of your travel. That's very concerning as well. This spyware, Mr. Chair, can also be used to access cloud-based data. What isn't in the cloud in this day and age? This is what this government has exposed our public servants to, having their cloud-based information across the network. Internet search history. I, I for one, would certainly not like my internet uh, search history um, put out for the, the, the public to see in terms of what uh, movies I'm interested in, perhaps, items I'd perhaps be considering buying my family for, for the holidays. I mean, this is the most personal of information that we're talking about here, Mr. President, that has been gathered through this spyware uh, and is now in the hands of, of, uh, of government. Deleted content. We've all had content, uh, Mr. Chair, that we have deleted in an effort to try and um, dispose of. Certainly, we've all heard the fact that once it's in the, the internet, it's out there forever. Who knew that with this government, once it's on your phone, it's with the government forever? But that apparently, according to this report here, is the case. And finally, Mr. Chair, social media activity. Every single post you've ever liked, everything you've ever reposted, every comment that you've ever made, if you are with one of these federal agencies, Mr. Chair, is now in the hands of government. Very, very uh, concerning. And you know what, uh, Mr. Chair, public servants are concerned as well. They are gravely concerned. They wonder, and I quote, why any government office would need such access to people's private information. But yet this is here where we are, uh, Mr. Kirk and Ms. Ms. Gord, at this, at this point, where they have access to this private, private information. And I'll go on to quote uh, two witnesses who were fortunately added here to the list. Um, this is Jennifer Carr, or Ms. Carr, I should say, pardon me, president of the Professional Institute of the Public Service of Canada. We need to make sure that if our personal information is gathered, that we know about what information is gathered, how it's being used, and how it could be affected if there are others who were able to access it. My goodness, you have any breach of public information in this day and age, a, a responsible corporation immediately notifies you of it. In this situation, public servants, our public service wasn't even being notified of the collection of this information, never mind a potential breach of it. 
In a statement, uh, the Public Servants Alliance of Canada National President Chris Alward, another witness I see you have fortunately added, called the use of such technology without a privacy assessment alarming and shows a deliberate lack of transparency and accountability by federal departments and agencies. These words could not be closer to the truth, Mr. Chair. But to, to add insult to injury, uh, Mr. Chair, is I, in my role as Shadow Minister to the Treasury Board, uh, to the President of the Treasury Board, uh, in the effort to get uh, a response from her, many media outlets were denied any communication from her, any statements. So I, yesterday, Mr. Chair, sent her this letter asking her under Section 3.2, uh, the directive of the privacy impact assessment to, to take responsibility for this. Because I, I hear my Liberal colleagues saying, oh, you know, we have these measures in, in place. They should be um, in, enforced. Well, the Treasury Board does have oversight of this under Section 3.2, where it states that the President of the Treasury Board holds general responsibility for registering all privacy impact assessments and reviewing the manner in which they are maintained and managed in all government institutions. And yet, we also see in the article, Mr. Chair, that we've learned that these departments' use of spyware did not undergo privacy impact assessments as is required under 3.2 of the PIA under the responsibility of the President of the Treasury Board to add insult to injury. So, I mean, this, this just gets worse and worse. So in this letter, Mr. Chair, I hope you will be assured, uh, my Conservative colleagues here will be assured, my Bloc and NDP colleagues will be assured, the government will be assured, um, that I have called upon her to immediately enforce compliance. And if those privacy impact assessments are still not initiated by your end, follow through on the obligations by enforcing the consequences of non-impliance. Because this is certainly the very least that can be done when we find out that this spyware is, is in place after, after the lack of oversight by the Treasury Board, by the lack of oversight by this government, that this can at least begin to be made right. In conclusion, Mr. Chair, I'll say I think what concerns us most on, on this side over here, my Conservative colleagues and I, is what was referred to uh, in an article uh, which was just published uh, today, pardon me, yesterday, I should say, and that is the idea of the, and I'm, I want everyone to hear this phrase, the normalization of surveillance. The normalization of surveillance. Terrifying. Uh, it is terrifying. Uh, I, I think we, all Canadians, should be consumed with the normalization of, of surveillance. I'm not even going to get into the digital ID uh, issue here, but the normalization of surveillance, and they have good reason to be concerned, as we have found in this information that was uncovered last last week. So I cannot um, state the uh, the urgency and the necessity of this study as as brought forward. Th and thank you very much uh, to my colleague for for doing so. Um, this this must be addressed. This must be addressed immediately to quell the concerns of the public service and to further provide Canadians with confidence that this government uh, gives a darn about their, their privacy, uh, Mr. Chair.